is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Let us rise as we join in the hymn of the Reformation, A Mighty Fortress is Our God.
The epistle reading is taken from Romans, the third chapter. This is what the Apostle Paul has penned by the power and inspiration of God's Holy Spirit. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in His divine forbearance He had passed over former sins. It was to show His righteousness at the present time so that He might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that no one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We are so pleased to have Eric Coomer with us playing the trumpet this uh, afternoon from St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Oviedo. The choir anthem today is called God uh, is called God is our refuge and strength.
Our Gospel reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Jesus. Jesus. Teach me your way, O oh Lord, that I may walk in your truth.
afternoon, Saints. This is really an interesting day for us to gather and celebrate all these different occasions. And what a grand day it is. God is still enthroned in heaven above and in our hearts. As we gather to worship Him this day, we are confident that He is here. And it's a wonderful day, really, for us to gather with multiple celebrations. It's a joyous way for us to share our love for Jesus. Today we gather to celebrate specifically the Reformation and to celebrate the 60th anniversary of our Redeemer Lutheran Church. How many of you are members of our Redeemer? How many are charter members of our Redeemer? <laughs> Fewer hands. Fewer hands. <laughs> Well, all I can say is you may be on Dunn Avenue, but your ministry is far from done. <laughs> God has a lot for you still to do, and 60 is the new 30, so to speak. <laughs> God has some great things in store for his ministry here. So I reviewed a little bit of the history, and, and since there are no charter members here, maybe this is new to some of you. Uh, I found it very interesting. From the earliest of its days, the Florida Georgia District through its Board of Missions, began canvassing the North Jacksonville area and showed that from the very foundation of this congregation, there was a partnership that was formed. The district helped secure the service of Rock, uh, Reverend August Quirin uh, in the early 1960s, and then Reverend Richard York in the mid-1960s, and then Reverend Wayne Lehrer in the early 70s. Anybody remember any of them? We got one. He can tell you that I'm telling you the truth. God has continued to bless this congregation. Even during some challenging times in the ministry days here, the district walked with you. As time moved on, God sent his servant Will Hassel. And then uh, he refocused the ministry when he sent Reverend Ed Scott. And then when Reverend Jonathan Rocky, a son of the district who grew up not too far from here, came and began his ministry here, God began to open up another chapter of the ministry in this place. How many of you knew Pastor Rocky? A few more hands went up. That's good. God has always been at work through this ministry, and He's always had a good plan for the ministry here. In 1991, God sent your current pastor, Pastor Bill Reister. How many of you know him? <laughs> <laughs> They're with us. They're with us. <laughs> and He has faithfully served you, bringing not only with Him ministerial gifts, but also musical gifts that have sustained your ministry and your witness in this community and even beyond that. And so today we gather around this scene on our way rejoicing. What a wonderful reminder of God's gracious providence always providing for his people as he leads them in faith, connecting people to Jesus. And brothers and sisters, it's really all about connecting people to Jesus. It was in Martin Luther's time and it is still today. On our way, rejoicing causes me to reflect on the fact that you realize that you've not arrived yet. You are on your way. You are where you once were 60 years ago, and you aren't where you'll one day be, but you're somewhere on the way, and while you're on the way, you're rejoicing, and that's a good thing. Makes me think of Paul's letter to the Philippian church. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and, and thanksgiving, by supplication, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The reason we can go on our way rejoicing is because even in the midst of a pandemic, even in a world that rejects the truth of the gospel, even in a culture 
where church people feel less and less inclined to worship. Even in a culture that turns away from the church and rejects its witness, we know the Lord is still at hand. Here, He is with us even now in this place, the living and risen Lord Jesus Christ. I know it's the wrong season, but He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful that we can shout that? And that we can shout it together, knowing that our living Lord Jesus is here with us. The same one who spoke peace to his disciples on the night of the resurrection continues to speak his peace to his redeemed disciples, the very ones who celebrate our Redeemer, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our King. And so my prayer for the missionary people here at our Redeemer and for the whole First Coast Circuit is for the same fire that compelled Martin Luther to break free of the traditions of his day for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to fill each of you with the same passion, to proclaim Jesus in word and in deed, wherever he sends you on your way, rejoicing. Of course, you know, today we face a similar reality. A failure to let the gospel have its free course is what prompted the Reformation in the first place. Luther, as you know, was tired of how the church authorities continued to abuse their power and constrain believers by fear and threats, giving them the impression that they could somehow earn their salvation by themselves apart from the grace of God. And so Luther posted the 95 Theses on the Castle Church door in Wittenberg as a protest against the abuses that were so prevalent in the church of that day and as a call to reform the church. And of all those 95 that he posted on the door, perhaps the most important, at least for me, is number 62, which says, the right and true treasure of the church is the most holy gospel of the glory and grace of God. The most precious gift that we have as Christian believers is the gospel. And while things have changed significantly in our world in the last 10 months, this remains the same. The gospel of Jesus Christ. In a day when the gospel is often overshadowed by politics and by social agendas and by legalism, just to name a few, we live in a time that was not unlike that which Martin Luther faced in his day. Many people all around us are struggling with faith issues. For some, they'll avoid it altogether. They don't want to deal with religion or faith. For others, they'll live it on the surface. Oh yeah, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm a member of a church. Really? Do you know your pastor's name? It'd be an interesting question to ask somebody someday when they say, oh yeah, I'm a member of the church down the street there. Well, what's your pastor's name? Uh, I don't know. See, we're living in a day when Many Christians live on a very surface level and fail to take that deeper dive into God's grace. Luther understood how important it was for the church of his day to break free of the meaningless traditions that had accumulated to proclaim the truth of the gospel, the gospel of grace. And so in our gospel lesson, we heard these words, if you hold to my teaching, then you are really my disciples, and then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Many in Luther's day seemed to think that following certain religious formulas, going through uh, enough religious services, saying certain prayers and saying them correctly, or bringing enough offerings for the very things which would lead them to eternal life. That would secure it for them rather than leaning and learning on God's truth in Jesus Christ. 
Christ. People sought to find ways to secure their own salvation, to earn their, their way in. But the call of Jesus is to discipleship, to a deeper level of commitment of our faith in all that we do. It's not just a once a week kind of thing, but it's an every day, 24 seven. Love for Jesus. We have a pastor in our district who contracted COVID. He spent over 60 days in the hospital. He's still on oxygen 24 seven because his lungs have not fully re recuperated. This is from back in the end of May. He's still wrestling with it, not back to his ministry. He said to me, I saw so many people not leave that COVID world. And he said, I began to be known by the nurses as pastor. And they would ask me questions. And when he got out, because all that time he was in a hospital, he couldn't even see his wife or his family. When he got out, he was so grateful. And it just showed in everything he did. And everything he's doing. Brothers and sisters, we have been rescued from death. A death that we've earned. A death that we deserve. Jesus freely saved us from a fate worse than COVID, but from eternal damnation. And he asked us to live in the joy, to go on our way rejoicing in all that he has done for us. It seems to me that people take what God has made simple and make it very complicated. And I think it's been like that since the beginning, right? God told Adam and Eve to avoid one tree in the midst of the garden. One tree! That's all they had to do was avoid one tree. And they couldn't do that one thing. God told Abraham that he would make him the father of many nations. And impatiently, what happened? Abraham couldn't wait. Over and over again, God wants to keep it simple and we complicate it. Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except for me. There's one way. It's so simple. Jesus didn't hide anything in here. He said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you want to know the way to the Father, it's through Jesus. It's not complicated. It's rather simple. And yet, even today, as, as advanced as our society is, no matter how often we simplify things, when it comes to faith, we make them complicated. Rather than going on our way rejoicing, people often live in fear or uh, fear of failing God. Like God is standing over us, ready to crack the whip all the time. Here's a news flash for you. If you are human, and I suspect that most of you are, you will fail. That's a fact. We call it sin, and not any one of us is immune from it. And by the way, the wages of sin, still death. Sin leads us to works righteousness, where we try to justify our wrong actions and convince God that we're not so bad. We try and excuse them away, and we complicate what God has made so simple. If you ask a believer, I mean, a, a true believer, what God is known best for, they're not going to say judgment or condemnation. In fact, Jesus said, God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world from sin. Simple. And yet we've complicated it. We like to think that God stands there in judgment. God's got better things to do. He'd rather see us on our way rejoicing. He created us and redeemed us in Jesus. God made it so simple. 
In the epistle lesson from Romans chapter 3, Paul, who once himself had complicated things pretty much, is sharing the things that God revealed to him on the road to Damascus. He wrote to those in, in Rome who were seeking to earn God's favor through their own merits. And he said, therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by the works of the law, by the things that they're doing. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of our sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, God told the story over and over again, simple story, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift. As a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. To be received by faith. I had a seminary professor used to say, faith is a beggarly hand that reaches out to receive what God has offered. It's really that simple. It's, it's not complicated. It's not about pews, it's not about carpets, it's not about altars, it's not about crosses. All those are nice things. But it's all about Jesus. And none of the rest of this stuff really matters unless we first have a relationship with Jesus. That's what Luther fought for. Luther was willing to actually die for his conviction that the church complicated what God had made so simple. These Roman Christians were so confused because they had complicated also what God had made so simple. It is difficult for us to wrap our heads around the fact that God in His great love and grace exchanged the life of His own Son on the cross for our sin-filled lives. Why would he do that? I don't even let somebody get a parking place in front of me. <laughs> but God gave his son in my place. Nothing we could do could earn his affection. Nothing about any of us deserves anything but God's wrath. And yet, for the sake of Jesus and his shed blood on the cross, our lives are declared righteous and faith is a key that secures it. And it's all about His grace. It has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with the love of a gracious God. And we need not complicate it. We just need to open our hearts to receive it. And maybe I'm preaching to the choir this afternoon. But I can almost guarantee you that we all know somebody needs to hear that simple, uncomplicated message of the gospel. Perhaps one of the reasons the church in our day, as in Luther's day, seems irrelevant to many in the world at large is because we've complicated things so much. We've made it about all kinds of things that it's really not about, and we fail to recognize the fact that we too, even as Christian believers, are sinners in need of God's grace. David Kinnaman, CEO of Barna Research, has shown the, how many in the world look at the church as judgmental and hypocritical and irrelevant for our day. Many see the, the church as an exclusive country club, only for certain people and only for certain types of people, for like-minded people that don't care about others beyond their own campus. In fact, some would cite the community reports of how many non-religious organizations in the community show more care and concern for those in need than does the church. And I got to tell you, as a district president, that hurts to hear that kind of thing. It really hurts. But I know that there's probably truth to this. And Jesus said the truth would set us free. We have to recognize our own shortcomings if we want to reach the world with the good news of Jesus Christ. Paul said, for all that sinned and falls short 
of the glory of God, and all are justified freely by His grace through redemption that came through Christ Jesus. Why must we complicate what God has made to us? This hope challenged and changed Luther's heart. This simple truth. And it holds powerful hope for a new reformation even today. We are saved by grace through faith, not by the works of our hands or the works of the law. Jesus alone is the way of salvation. And our priority as believers in Jesus Christ should always be to connect people to Jesus. How many people in your family, how many people in your circle of friends do you not see in heaven because you failed to tell them the simple, uncomplicated truth about Jesus and His love. About the sacrifice that Jesus made so that they might have eternal life. When we love people, we want to tell them that story. Over 16 years ago, it was this simple story of the love of Jesus Christ that motivated and led the district to plant a congregation here in North Jacksonville so that many would know the truth of Jesus and of that truth set them free. The Reformation is always a reminder for us to get back to the basics. Sola Scriptura. God's Word is our great heritage. Sola Fide, faith alone. Sola Gratia, grace alone, which points us to Solas Christus, Christ alone. You can do all kinds of programs. You can buy the latest and all the different things that are out there to, to, to make the church shine. But Jesus is not at the heart and at the center of everything that we do. It's just from the rest. We can get back to the basics. Not make it complicated, but God has made it so easy. Many have said that COVID has the power to change the course of the church. I believe it already has in many ways. Martin Luther confronted the issues of the church of his day with the truth of God's word, pointing people back to Jesus to build their foundations on him. And it started this movement that we call the Reformation, a heritage that we find great joy and great pride in. What might happen if on this Reformation Day celebration we committed ourselves to once again standing alone on the truth of His Word over and against all the traditions and the agendas and the rules, and we simply share the love of Jesus and His grace in the communities all around us? It was more than just our words, but our actions followed suit. Perhaps then we would truly go on our way of rejoicing as hearts and lives are transformed by the power of God's Word. Amazing, and yet simple. The good news is, God in His magnificent grace has made it so simple. He really has. It's not complicated. Jesus died on the cross to take away our sins, and He offers us forgiveness and new life by faith. One real simple way to, to share it, that you all know it. Jesus loves me this I know, for the Bible tells us. Little ones to Him belong there, but He is strong. Could it get more simple than that? That is the essence of the gospel. God is we don't want to leave it there. We want to build on that. But it's a great place to start. For people who are in despair, people who are in hope. I believe that this is the message, not only for the people on the first coast, but for each of us individually to share with others. Let his light shine through you. Let his truth flow from your life and from your lips. Today, we celebrate the 60th anniversary of our Redeemer Lutheran Church. 
birth as a result of wanting to share the truth and the love of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. He is our Redeemer. Today, we gather and we celebrate the Reformation, our Lutheran heritage, born also out of a desire to share the truth, the uncomplicated truth of Jesus' love. Let me encourage you today to let the truth of his love flow through you all. Stand in faith, relying on his grace and not on any works of your own. And then, together we will celebrate and be on our way rejoicing. Amen. The peace of God which passes all of human understanding will keep our hearts and our minds in Jesus and the life everlasting. Amen. Please rise. Following the two sung versicles, we will sing We All Believe in One True God as our confession of faith in place of the traditional canon. Traditional canon. Let my prayer rise before you as incense.
during the days of the pandemic, we are not passing an offering plate. If anyone has an offering, the plates are in the rear as you're leaving. And we thank you for uh, the gifts. We certainly want to thank Dr. Gregory Walton for bringing such an inspiring message and for being our district president, a task that is so important to the church, but I'm sure it comes without enough appreciation for all that he does for all of the congregations and many different situations. And it was 10 years ago that I believe he spoke here for our 50th anniversary as well. And we're grateful that you and Edith are able to be with us uh, this afternoon. And thankful for the uh, work that the district does in our behalf and for all of the help and uh, all of the resources that it provides. And we as a congregation are trying to make a new beginning and showing our appreciation by supporting that work as well. This afternoon, we uh, are so happy to have all of you join us. Uh, we did have one person who is not quite a charter member. She is almost a charter member. That's Jean Crossman at RSVP, but I do not see Jean with us. And uh, she joined the church in 1961 and was for many years the church organist. We, uh, at the early service this morning, did uh, recognize many of our long-time members. Uh, Tom and Donna Wakefield, uh, who were present for the 10 o'clock service, are 38-year members. They are the ones that have been here the longest. But Mary Person that was not able to be with us this morning, she is here now, and I'm going by memory now, but I think it's at least 33 years or so. I don't have the list in front of me, but uh, we have a number of members. Uh, Dorothy Head and Monica Vessant in the back also have been here at least that long. And it's not only the members that have been here standing fast, uh, helping with the work, but the many new people who have joined uh, during the years, including new members more recently, that are helping us to uh, go on our way rejoicing. I, I love the message, and one thing I was thinking as you were speaking is we don't want to just stand still. We want to be going forward in mission, and we do so joyfully. And I can honestly say it has been a joy for me as uh, the pastor to serve with all of these fine people in the last 29 years. I do want to share two uh, letters that I received. The first is from Janet Corum, the widow of our first pastor, Reverend Gerald Corum. To the members of our Redeemer Lutheran Church, God's blessing on your 60th anniversary. It takes me back to the beginning of our Redeemer. My husband's first call was a mis as missionary at large to North Jacksonville. I remember he fought hard to convince the Secretary of Missions that the congregation had the talent and the know-how to physically construct the church. And she's speaking of the original church building that's about three and a half miles farther east of here on Dunn Island, no longer standing uh, where the Bank of America building is today. She continued, many a day he would come home filthy from pouring con concrete, clean up and teach a confirmation class or direct the choir. 15,500 hours of labor were donated by members in completion of the church. During the summer months on break from his studies at the seminary, he did construction work. He helped in building the Dallas County Jail where Lee Harvey, Ar Harvey Oswald was killed. He and I would canvass the neighborhood while my neighbor would watch our three daughters. It was such a blessing to be um, part of the beginning of a new church that God continued to bless the spreading of the gospel of our Redeemer. And that is signed by Janet Corbin. The other letter is from Reverend Wayne Larry. Your brothers and sisters, it's already 45 years since Lois and I bid you farewell when I accepted our synod's call to enter on active duty as an army chaplain. In those many years, you have grown and more actively marked zip code 32218 as a place of ministry that honors the Lord Jesus. Both of us join in celebrating your 60 years of ministry and pray that in the years ahead you will abound more and more in witness and adoration of Jesus who makes us one family. In those 45 years since we last served our Redeemer, we moved 17 times in service to God's church and our nation, pastoring soldiers and their families in about 8 or 10 U.S. states and several overseas assignments. In those same 45 years, you have relocated Redeemer's ministry and put a rich marker in the sands of North Jacksonville. 
We wish we could be with you to celebrate it, but alas, I'm just nine days post-operative from hip replacement surgery and cannot travel, even if there were no pandemic. We pray that God will richly bless your next 60 years of ministry. Yours and his, Wayne Lara, Pastoral Associate, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, Falls Church, uh, Virginia. So we appreciate those uh, remembrances. And um, I also want to say that we're very happy to have representatives from many of our circuit uh, congregations, including the pastors that have been participating, Pastor Paul Meyer from our daughter congregation, Holy Trinity in Kingsland, Georgia. Now, why would I say such a, a thing? Uh, in the late 1980s, when the then members of our Redeemer decided to sell the old church building, they received $850,000 and they gave 10%, $85,000, to help start the mission in Kingsland, Georgia. And we've always been happy that uh, they did so and we have that uh, relationship and part in that ministry. Pastor Pat McKenzie from Hope Lutheran Church, and we're so happy that you're able to join us along with Dr. Charlton and his wife Lois, who will be, uh, Rick will be sharing uh, one of my favorite hymns, a Norwegian hymn, Behold a Host, uh, later in the service. And of course, Pastor Leon Roberts, uh, our own Pastor Roberts, I still call him Vicar accidentally sometimes, but uh, we will be hearing more about his, uh, his ministry later as President Walton has a few words uh, of blessing for him. And then, as I mentioned, Pastor Skopak is ill today. Pastor Pop felt that he should not come and possibly expose us. But Pastor Rick Engel and his wife Sandy are with us. Pastor Emeritus and Grace, happy to have him here as well. And Pastor Herb Orman and his wife Jan are present also from uh, Holy Cross Lutheran Church. Have I missed anyone? And then I want to say how nice it is to have some of our scout leaders. We have been a charter organization for Boy Scout Troop 135 and Cub Scout Pac 135, I think going on 35 or more years. Uh, I know at least 29, and I'm sure that it was going before that. And so we had uh, one of our scout leaders with us this morning, Eddie David, uh, and we're happy to have Ben Hall and our scout master with us, and also Angela Rowland, one of our scout leaders and her family this afternoon too. Following the service, we do have light refreshments in the fellowship hall. Let me tell you how that's going to work. We are encouraging you to social distance. Uh, if you cannot keep safe distance, please wear your mask. You will be ushered out of the uh, service, and I'm going to have a table prayer from the rear of the sanctuary before we dismiss to go there. You may go down either hallway, uh, take a right and come to the first hallway, or you can go to the second. There are two different serving lines. The food is the same in either one, and that way you'll be able to be served more quickly. We do ask that you social distance in line, that you be mindful of comings and goings, uh, perhaps even wearing your mask until you're seated at your table, and if possible, sit with people that you traveled with uh, or with family members. I believe that that is uh, most of what I need to share with you. Uh, perhaps I should conclude by saying a special thank you to our Renewal 60 Anniversary Committee. And I love the emphasis on renewal. We plan with the Lord's help and blessing to be spiritually renewed and go forth energized to share the love of Christ in this community and beyond our four walls. Uh, Pastor Leon Roberts, who was our vicar, is helping us uh, as he awaits his first call to start an internet radio station. And so we literally will be ministering beyond our four walls, not only through our daily uh, prayer emails and the live streaming, but also uh, very soon through an internet radio station. And he'd be happy to talk with you about that, I'm sure, or show you uh, where that will be at. And. Uh, with that said, I believe it is time to celebrate the certification for ministry. So, Leon, if you would come forward, and Dr. Walton, uh, as he, uh, and I will go ahead and... You can look for the scripture reading, God. Uh, These are the same readings that I read this morning, Leon, but it doesn't hurt to hear them again. 
from the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. The saying is trustworthy if anyone aspires to the office of overseer, he desires a noble task. Therefore an overseer must be above reproach, the husband of one wife, sober-minded, self-controlled, respectable, hospitable, able to teach, not a drunkard, not violent but gentle, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money. He must manage his own household well with all dignity, keeping his children submissive. For if someone does not know how to manage his own household, how will he care for God's church? He must not be a recent convert, or he may become puffed up with conceit and fall into the condemnation of the devil. Moreover, he must be well thought of by outsiders, so that he may not fall into disgrace, into the snare of the devil. And then from 2 Timothy, chapter 4, I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing in his kingdom, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, Fulfill your ministry, President Walker. This is really a missionary endeavor, not only for our Redeemer, but also for the First Coast Circuit, because I know that many of the pastors have worked with uh, Pastor Leon to, to prepare him uh, as he's gone through the colloquy process. The colloquy process is not for sissies. Yeah, yeah. Thanks a lot of work. And he has done that. And he has been awarded the opportunity to serve the congregation. And we pray. We pray in, in God's timing that that will open up. Uh, God has and is preparing a special place. Very often when I meet with a congregation that is vacant, looking for a new pastor, I'll say, you don't need a half-baked cake. Why do you not need a half-baked cake? Because it doesn't taste right. It's not done. And so right now, God has put uh, Pastor Leon as well as the congregation in that baking process. And when it's done, the ingredients will come together and form a partnership that God will use for His glory. Until then, we continue to pray that God would, would prepare not only Pastor, but also that congregation for such a time as God would use this gentleman in ministry for his good and his purposes. So I invite you to join me for a word of prayer. Almighty and gracious God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, you have commanded us to pray that you would send forth laborers into your harvest. Today we celebrated this before you, your servant who has heard your call and answered it in an amazing way. We pray for Leon Roberts, whom you have gifted and prepared through diligent study and various life experiences, and who is now been certified to serve in your harvest field through the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. Continue to shape and mold him as you prepare a place for him to serve. We pray in your time you would open the right ministry opportunity before him, and until then, grant him patience and confidence of all that you desire to do in him and through him for the sake of Jesus. Continue, we pray, to build him up in your holy word, that he might be an apt teacher and preacher of the good news, always with a heart to connect people to Jesus. Bless his family as they support him and fill him with the true joy of heeding your call to serve Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so we ask God's blessing upon one's vigor, and now Pastor Robert, that God would continue to bless his ministry. Uh, and I have a feeling God's not going to let you go until you finish this radio station. So <laughs> keep that up. <laughs> and Leon, before you go back to your seat, John, would you stand up? Because we want them to see his better half. John was a dear partner in ministry with him. 
And as I told the folks this morning, as a funeral director with 40 years of experience, Leon Roberts has a resume, a pastoral resume, unlike any that any congregation has brought out of the top. Not only knows how to care for the dead, but uh, comfort the living, and he even has on his resume that he knows how to drive a tractor and has mowed our field. So, uh, it's just a matter of time until the congregation finds him and says, yes, this is this is God we need. And we thank God for you. Go in peace as you serve the Lord. Dr. Rick Carlin, we hold him up.
I'm going to ask the crucifer and the torch bearer to come forward to lead the procession out of the sanctuary, followed by the pastors and the choir. We are not going to start singing, however, until we are in the back. So Susan will be playing the final hymn uh, until we are in the back where we may social distance and join in singing the final hymn. Pastor Roberts will be assisting with the collects after I have the prayer for the church and mission, the Kyrie and Lord's Prayer. So Pastor Leon, come forward as well. Let us rise and join in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for the glorious Reformation gospel, the good news of justification by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. We're grateful that your word as our great heritage is proclaimed freely from pulpits in this land and declared uh, by your people, your disciples, and many other places. We ask you, Lord Jesus, through your Holy Spirit's power to equip us and send us out to speak the gospel clearly in a world that so uh, has so little interest in the things uh, which you have done for them, uh, but so quickly would tune their ears to lesser things. We pray, O Lord, that you would bless this congregation, the churches of the First Coast Circuit and of the Florida Georgia District, as well as our Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, that we may go forth as witnesses, even as Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Bless this ministry, O Lord, that we might not only faithfully bring the law and the gospel to people locally, but through modern media also share the gospel more widely as a church without walls. We pray, O Lord, that you would provide for all of our needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus, as you have so grac graciously done for these 60 years. And we look to you, trusting in your care and provision for all of our needs as we go on our way rejoicing in Jesus' name. Lord, have mercy. Grant your blessing. 
blessing to the election this week and lead your people to vote for those candidates at the national, state, and local levels of government who will help to preserve and defend our liberties and scriptural values. Protect and prolong their lives and rule over all things for the sake of your church. Help us to be considerate of others as we also show forth the praise of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Oh, Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, gave to his holy apostles many excellent gifts and commanded them earnestly to feed his flock. Make all pastors of the flock diligent to preach your holy word and the people obedient to follow it, that together they may receive the crown of everlasting glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just words, give to us your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commands, and also that we, being dependent from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness in Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.